In this video, we're going to show how to factor polynomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not equal to 1. Example, factor 12x squared plus 43x plus 10. If we try factoring by trial and error, we know that we're looking for a factorization where we are multiplying two binomials. So what we want is the first terms, when you multiply them, to obtain 12x squared. So you will need x, x, and then you will need some coefficients whose product is 12. You will also need second terms to have a product of 10. So there are several possibilities here. Maybe our factorization will begin like this. x, 12x. Or maybe 2x, 6x. Or maybe 3x, 4x. But then now we have to go and try factors of 10. Now possibilities are 1, 10, or 2, 5. Now if we have 1, 10, What do we get if we were to multiply? x times 12x is 12x squared, yes. 1 times 10 is 10, but 1 times 12x plus 10x is 22x. That doesn't work. So 1, 10 in this fashion do not work. Observe that the order does matter. Maybe it's not 1, 10, but maybe 10, 1. That's another possibility. So x times 12x is 12x squared, 10 times 1 is 10. Now what about uh, 10 times 12x is 120x plus x times 1, total of 121x. That doesn't work. So let's take a look at the possibilities and see if we run across the correct factorization. So here we have a list. Of the possibilities. So x plus 1, 12x plus 10, x plus 10 times 12x plus 1, and so on, up until 3x plus 10 times 4x plus 1. 3x times 4x is 12x squared, 10 times 1 is 10, and then we have 10 times 4x, 40x, plus 3x times 1, which is 3x, Result, 43x. Okay, so we have factored our polynomial by trial and error. Some observations. This took a lot of work. So that's our first observation here. So it is rather inefficient and it is tedious. Coming up with the possibilities is very tedious. So from this example, it is evident that the method of trial and error can be both tedious and inefficient. Now, let's, uh, let's make an observation about our given polynomial. I could write 43x as 3x plus 40x. So let me do that right now. So I have 12x squared plus 43x plus 10 is the same as 12x squared plus 3x plus 40x plus 10. What did I do here? I just split the middle term 43x into 3x plus 40x. Now let's work with that. Let's try to factor this resulting expression which has four terms, let's try to factor that by using the grouping method. Let's turn to the board. So 
So we're going to write our polynomial, 12x squared plus 43x plus 10, as 12x squared plus 3x plus 40x plus 10. I'm going to call that split in the middle term. Now I am going to try factoring by grouping. I'm going to group these first two terms, last two terms. Here are my two groups. Okay, in our first group, we can factor out 3x, and we're left with 4x plus 1. Check. 3x times 4x, 12x squared, plus 3x times 1 is 3x. So that works. In our second group, we can factor out 10. So we end up with 10 times 4x plus 1. You can check that this product is in fact 40x plus 10. Now, does grouping work in here? Yes, it does. We created a common factor, 4x plus 1. That happens to be the greatest common factor of these two terms. So we factor it out as we know how to. 4x plus 1 has been factored. What's left? 3x plus 10. Now, let's compare. In this factorization process, where we split the middle term and use the grouping method to factor, we didn't spend a lot of time getting our result in comparison to trial and error. So, when factoring a polynomial such as this one, we would like to be able to do this, fact, uh, split the middle term in try factoring by grouping. So, the question has to be asked. If we are given a factorable polynomial ax squared plus bx plus c, can we always express the middle term bx as a sum ux plus vx so that we can factor by grouping? If we can do that, then we prefer our latter method. The answer is affirmative. If we have a factorable polynomial ax squared plus bx plus c, we will always be able to split the middle term bx into a sum ux plus vx so that we can factor by grouping. Let's try some additional examples. First, the method. Grouping method to factor trinomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. We want a to be different than 1, but this method will work also when a equals 1. First, multiply a times c. So you multiply a and c together. Refactor that result into a product of two factors, u and v, such that when you add those two factors, u and v, the result is the middle coefficient b. Then you split the middle term bx into ux plus vx. And then you factor the resulting expression by grouping. So let's try number one. Our instruction, factor the given trinomial using the grouping method. So in number one, we have 4x squared plus 8x plus 3. Okay, so first step, we need to find out a times c. Now, in this case, a is 4, c is 3. So, a times c is 12, because 4 times 3 is 12. Our second step is to refactor a c into a product of two integers that have some 8 in this case. So, let's see. I want a c to be a product. 
Now it could be 1 times 12 or it could be 2 times 6 or it could be 3 times 4. Now our first we're going to call it our U, our second one we're going to call our V. So U times V. Again, what we need is the factorization where the sum of the factors is the middle coefficient. Now, 1 plus 12 is 13, so dismissed. That's not going to be the one that works. 2 plus 6 is 8. Okay, so we found our desired factorization. Our u is 12, our v is 6. So then our next step is going to be to split the middle term. So we're not going to write 8x anymore. Instead, we're going to write 2x plus 6x. So 4x squared plus 2x plus 6x, and then we have plus 3. Our last step is to take this result and factor it by grouping. So factor by grouping. So we will always group the first two, last two. So first two, last two. So what do we have here? In our first group, we can factor up, we can factor out 2x. Now we're left with 2x plus 1. Check. 2x times 2x, 4x squared. 2x times 1, 2x. Plus, factor the second group. We can factor out a3. And we're left with 2x plus 1. Observe that now we have a common factor. That is the greatest common factor of our two terms. So we factor it out. So 2x plus 1 has been factored. What's left? 2x plus 3. Okay. Let's try another example. Number 2. 12x factor 12x squared plus 43x plus 10. 12x squared plus 43x plus 10. This example is familiar. Remember, we have done this example before. We split 43x into 3x plus 40x. But we need to explain how that split up came about. That's what our steps will reveal. Number one, multiply a times c. In this case, 12 times 10, which is 120. Number two, we need to refactor ac. We need to write it as a product of two factors that gives you 120. Now let's try 1 times 120. So that's our u, that's our v. Now we want their sum to be equal to the middle coefficient, 43. Now 1 and 120 do not work because 1 plus 120 is 121. But we don't want 121, we want 43. So we keep checking, we keep looking for combinations. 12 times 60 is 120, but when you add them, you get 62, which is not what we want. So, so far, no success. How about 3 and 40? Okay, success now. This is the one we want. Okay, so now we're going to split the middle term. Okay, so what do we get? 
12x squared plus 3x plus 40x plus 10. Factor by grouping. So group first two, last two. In our first group, we can factor out 3x. We're left with 4x plus 1. Check 3x times 4x plus 1. Gives you 12x squared plus 3x. Plus, now what's in common between 40x and 10? 10. 10. So we factor out the 10. That's the greatest common factor of that second group. And we are left with 4x plus 1. Success. We got a common factor, which is the greatest common factor of our two terms. So we factor it out. What are we left with? 3x plus 10. Okay. So here is the key to success. Our method relies on our ability to come up with the correct refactorization of AC as the product of two factors whose sum is the middle coefficient. So in our method, we're saying if a polynomial is factorable, this will carry true. But let me make the remark that if we're given a polynomial that happens to be prime, you will find out about it when you're trying to carry out step two, when you're trying to find the U and V that work. If you have a polynomial that's actually prime, this will never realize. You will never find a good combination to be able to complete the process. Okay, let's do one more example. Let's try number three now. So factor 10x squared minus 21x minus 10. Okay, so here we go. So first step, a times c. In this case, a is 10, c is negative 10, so a c equals negative 100. Our second step, refactor negative 100 into a product of two integers such that the sum of the factors is the middle coefficient, negative 21. Now, observation. If we're multiplying two integers and the answer is negative 100, that means these two integers must have must have opposite signs. One of them has to be positive, the other one has to be negative. So let's note that these have to be opposite in sign. Maybe this one's positive, that one's negative, or negative times positive. Okay, so let's for the time being not write this sign. Let's now write the possible factorizations of 100. It could be 1 times 100, or it could be 2 times 50, or it could be 4 times 25, or it could be 5 times 20, no 6, no 7, no 8, no 9, okay, 10. We could have 10 and 10, which was our original layout. Okay, so one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. We need to decide where to put the negative. So we have to observe that uh, if we're going to add this together, we're looking for a negative answer, negative 21. So that means the, the one that has the largest value has to have the minus in front. So it, amongst these two, the largest value is 100. So I'm going to have to have the minus in front of the 100. Unfortunately, that, that's not the correct combination because 1 plus negative 100 is negative 99, but that's not it. We don't want negative 99, so dismissed. So how about 2 plus negative 50? 2 plus negative 50 is negative 48, so that doesn't work either. And then uh, here we have 
4 plus negative 25, which is negative 21. That's the one we, it's going to work. That's the one we want. So now we go to our next step. Split the middle term. So I'm not going to write 10x squared minus 21x minus 10. Instead, I'm going to write 10x squared plus 4x minus 25x minus 10. And then I am going to go ahead and factor by grouping. So group first two, last two. That's how it's always done. First two, last two. In our first group, we can factor out 2x. The greatest common factor is 2x there. And we get 5x plus 2. Check 2x times 5x, 10x squared, plus 2x times 2, 4x. In our second group, we get to factor minus 5. And then we're left with 5x plus 2. Okay, so here is our greatest common factor in our two terms, 5x plus 2. So we factor it out, 5x plus 2, and we're left with 2x minus 5. Okay, so that's going to be all for now.